so uh, first of all, I'd quite like to go to Anna, um, Anna Lockwood, um, who's been a mentor on the programme before. Hello, Anna. Um, Hi, Abigail. Yeah, it would just be brilliant if you could give us an, an overview based on your experience um, of what you think mentoring is. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've been lucky because I've, I've been mentored um, in, in the industry and I have mentored as well. And uh, now after about 30 years of working in the broadcast biz, I think for my career and my network, it's been a very powerful tool. I've been formally involved in the RISE program uh, for the last three years. Prior to that, I was living in Australia. And at that time, Australia and New Zealand did not have a RISE program. But when I moved to the UK, uh, luckily I could join the UK program as a mentor. And now, of course, the Australia and New Zealand program is starting this year, which is very exciting. Um, and my mentee from last year is on the call, um, Amaka. So uh, you know, she uh, and I were paired um, for this third year. The first year that I mentored, it was all in person. The second year, it was all virtual. And then with Amaka, it was a nice hybrid between uh, virtual and in person. So, you know, for me, the, the experience with Amaka was um, also great because I really believe in reverse mentoring and that I get a lot out of the mentoring program as well. Having been in the industry for 30 plus years, um, it's so good to see uh, the industry with fresh eyes, people who are just coming in, uh, maybe people who have a shorter tenure, but a lot of experience in another industry. So it was, um, yeah, it was a very powerful experience for me as well, not just the mentoring part, but also what I got out of the program um, as part of the reverse mentoring. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Anna. Um, and Dushi, it would be really interesting to hear your thoughts on um, what you think is required in terms of supporting mentees through the programme. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Abigail. Um, so, yeah, so I actually was a mentor for the first time last year, which was a fantastic experience um, for me and really enjoyed meeting the young lady who I was working with. So I think what what's required in terms of support, I, I, I agree with Anna. I think it's just being available and being able to listen. So I found like the first few sessions is very much trying to work out what what the goals are. So what are the goals for the individual? You know, what's the current situation? Try and understand you know, what's happened or what, what the person who's now participating in the mentoring program has, has decided to do that for. Um, it could be personal goals. It could be career goals. It could be, you know, sounding board in terms of looking at different options or just at a kind of... Um, you know, at a crossroads of different options are trying to help support and formulate different ways and actually just kind of troubleshooting through different options. So just trying to trying to work out what the main areas are. And I guess that's sort of my sort of personal approach anyway, is trying to structure it somehow into some, you know, a couple, maybe one, two or three themes that we're looking at and then trying to identify, you know, wh where do we want to get to? So that that could be providing you know, visibility or networking with other people within the, the RISE um, teams, which is massive. You know, there's access to so many people in so many different businesses, looking at different career roles and paths. It might be just someone, oh, well, actually, I've always thought about being a video editor or a project manager. What could that mean? And you know, giving people access to talking to people who run those teams. You know, it could be looking at open roles, you know, within the RISE network and within our, all of our own personal networks, you know, putting people in touch with um, individuals or organizations that could help with them to, to achieve those specific objectives. So that, that's how I felt was it was a kind of the original setup for the first kind of month or so. And as you kind of settle into sort of more of your routine discussions and the specific decision points, really trying to support the person through the process. Um, and again, you know, it's definitely two way street. It, it equally makes you think as much as it as it would the person you're discussing with. And 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 I thought that was you know that was great from my perspective. 
and then trying to get to a point where you know you feel like you, you've helped to achieve whether maybe personal objectives training understanding visibility networking whatever it, whatever it is that the person's kind of you know feeling the need for a little bit of support to a little bit of discussion around brilliant super thanks ever so much Dushi. um and Colin, what was your perspective? I mean, you were a mentor for the first time for the North America program last year. Yes, I was. Uh, so my perspective as a mentor is, um, well, it was a fantastic experience for me. Um, Liz, uh, who will be speaking, uh, was uh, my mentee. Um, sorry, Liz. Um, sorry, you got me. Um, no, it, this is a fantastic program. It really is. And um, I know a lot of you are, are probably looking at me. Why is there, this is, you know, for gender diversity, this is, you know, a, a, a women's based program. Why, why is a guy involved, right? You know, where's this weird guy with a beard? You know, what, what's he doing here? And it is about gender diversity. Uh, there's overrepresentation of white male uh in, in this industry and frankly uh you know we need to we need to even the playing field so to speak and there's so many talented women out there that uh have not had the privilege that i i've had in in my career not to say that i didn't work hard to get where i am but i i know there were certain elements of that of of privilege along the way. Um, so taking that into consideration, what can I do uh, to help better the industry and, and uh, allow the industry to be a bit more open? Um, my perspective of, of uh, you know, being a mentor really is, you know, we're, we're setting up a roadmap. Uh, a lot of the work's gonna be on you because frankly, I don't know where you want to go. So you're gonna have to tell me as a mentee where you want to go. And then what we'll do is we'll start plotting out, okay, uh, you know, through, through my life experience and through my diverse perspectives, um, I can begin coaching you on getting to that place that you would like to go. And along the way, we'll, we'll sort of recenter ourselves. We'll figure out, okay, you know, is this working? Is this not working? And, uh, really, I, I just want to get to know you, get to know uh, where you would like to be uh, and what you believe is holding you back uh, is a big part. Um, now, that being said, we're not therapists by any stretch of the imagination. You do not want me as a therapist. I'm not qualified to be one, nor, nor would I wish that upon anybody. Uh, my goal is to not screw you up. Um, and I, I, I say that quite a lot. It, it, Honestly, it, it, it's what terrifies me about this whole experience is I don't want to screw you up as a human being. I don't want to screw up your career as a human being. So I, I just come in uh, with, with my diverse set of experiences and, you know, you can, uh, we'll figure out a cadence that works for you. Um, with my mentee, we, uh, we met once a week um, and, uh, even after the program, we still meet and uh, do some reverse mentoring. She mentors me a little bit, and we talk about uh, where where we're we're at in life. This is an ongoing process, and one of the great things about uh, that we've learned through the pandemic is things like Zoom. I'm in based in Los Angeles. You know, many of you are <laughs> uh, over in Europe, and uh, I, I think this is fantastic. We can still meet. This is much more interesting than any meeting you're going to have at work, first of all. So it, it, you're going to enjoy your time. It's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. But um, as I'm wont to do, I am uh, sort of meandering off. Um, so I'm going to take that as a cue to, to stop. But I do want to say um, this is a fantastic experience uh, for the mentors and the mentees, hopefully. Uh, if you get me as a mentor. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Colin. Really appreciate that. Um, Dushi, just one last thing for you, because I'm aware that you've got to, to leave us yeah, in sorry, two yeah. minutes. So no, just while we've got you, just one last question. Um, you know, what do you think is so important about mentoring? 
I mean, for you, what are the things that really stand out for that? That's sort of different from what people might have in a manager or or whatever. Why? I think you know what well, I think. One of the the main things is having someone to speak to outside of your organisation who's inherently involved in the industry is is quite significant. So while you know you've. You, everyone's working in slightly different industries, slightly different services. You know, the, the industry has got the same these similarities. And so having someone who's just not involved in the day-to-day, -day, might not be involved in the politics, you know, just a completely fresh pair of eyes in some ways to listen to, you know, what someone's gone through. And, and, and similarly, you know, I was you know, talking to my last mentee, you know, sometimes you kind of forget about some of the experiences that you had and you went through exactly the same things where you could be disillusioned or felt like things weren't going your way, you couldn't, couldn't find necessarily the way to step into the role that you wanted to get into or felt overlooked or whatever it was. It kind of going back to, it, it happens. It's not just about you. There's, it happens quite a lot in different places to different people with different skills and competencies at different ages so you know we all ex have experienced it in different ways and then you know really being that sounding board I think that's invaluable you know if you have friends or colleagues who've maybe moved up we all probably do that in different elements with different people where we've got those relationships but just having someone who's completely neutral is ultimately there to listen to you know, that individual's view and concerns or, you know, request for support is just looking at it from a completely different perspective, ideally, to, to provide a different perspective. Um, I think that's probably the most invaluable thing from both sides, you know, because it, it, it helps all of us, you know, definitely from a mental perspective. You consider that more when you're speaking to people in your teams or you're recruiting or you're, you're looking at maybe situations in your own business because you hear it kind of, you know, first degree from the people you're talking to, and, and you know, you rec you, re you re recognize those scenarios. So that, to me, is the most valuable thing. It's a refresh and a refresher for for both people, actually. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Dushy. Really appreciate that, and thank you for joining. No, not at all. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry that I have to. No, leave. don't worry at all. Thanks so much, Dushy. Thank you. Um. Hey, Bethan. Lovely to see you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Um, so Bethan um, was part of our mentoring program and this year is hopefully, depending on the matching process, going to come back as a mentor, um, which was something I touched on um, just at the beginning of the session, Bethan. Um, mm -hmm. So it would just be lovely if you could just talk to us about your own experiences being a, a mentee on the program and, and what the sort of the, the overall highlights and learnings were, were for you. Sure. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, I was part of the 2020 cohort. Um, so as, as Anna mentioned, it was completely virtual. Um, and I would kind of uh, decided to sign up to be a mentee because I had just got a promotion in uh, January 2020. I'd been uh, promoted. And I thought actually, because I've been at ITV for such a long time, I've been here 16 years, uh, moved lot in lots of different various roles, but um, I knew that I could just do with a little bit of outside experience and support. Um, so I ended up applying and got it. And I think I mentioned on, um, on a panel a few weeks ago, it, in hindsight, it was probably the best time for me to have a mentor, but also the worst time because we all know what happened in March, 2020. Um, and, you know, I'd just been promoted. So I was on a very steep learning curve. Uh, the pandemic hit. The demand for content went through the roof. So my my job uh, just, just went crazy. And I, I got burnt out because I had a, a three-year-old and a six-year-old at home as well, plus a mentoring program. So in, in one respect, it was um, the worst timing because it felt like I was going to explode. But uh, the on the other side of things it was the best thing that I could have done because I had you know someone there for me um at a time when I probably needed it the absolute most um but ultimately I did want to do it because I wanted to take control of my own career and my development and just be proactive instead of letting things cruise like I have done in the past um, and again, I just I was kind of itching to see what was outside uh, a life at ITV. And, you know, as Dushi has mentioned, Anana, you get um, you get that network and you get a whole 
set of amazing talented savvy women who are there to support you and not just your mentor but your your entire cohort you can just have that at your fingertips um so you know that that was incredible to have um but yeah it's it was it was having access to to that set of uh that network and um as Dushy said an unbiased person who can you know very easily take the emotion out of certain situations which was a big thing for me um, and suggest you know those options and put things into perspectives that you've never even thought about um so it, it's so many things but ultimately I think it shows you of a growth mindset you are someone that is open to learning and improving yourself and you know about potentially embracing the unknown sometimes um and sometimes even putting yourself outside of your comfort zone which you know we all know we need to do um and I think as well don't go into it thinking I must have a goal or I must have a direction because actually that in itself is something that you need to work on and if you don't know about those things it's an opportunity to push yourself and and make sure that you do know those things about yourself and know who you are in your career um and then using that to sort of catapult it so yeah brilliant thanks so much bethan um i've just got a question in the chat so i'm just gonna uh, answer that briefly and then liz and um amica it'd be great to come to you guys as well just with a, a similar thing for your perspective but one of the questions someone put in the chat was about does it matter at what stage of your career you're at when applying to be a mentee um and, you know, from the women that I've talked to in the past, um, it really doesn't. Um, you know, I can give that example of somebody who's, you know, perhaps at the earlier stages in their job, you know, maybe a year or two out of, of, of college or an apprenticeship or, or whatever. Um, so could really be sort of finding their feet at the start of their career um, and finding that sort of direction that they're looking for. Um, and then the example I gave at the very beginning, it was just so inspiring to hear about this woman who was in the program a couple of years ago, who was in her early 40s. And she said she nearly didn't apply because she thought, well, that program can't be for something, somebody like me. You know, mentoring must be for someone um, at an early stage in their career. But, um, you know, I, I can absolutely testify um, that, you know, I think that whatever stage in your career you're at, it can have real relevance um, and I think perhaps for us, that's an important thing in terms of the matching process. I think there is a difference in terms of how we would match up a mentee who's at that earlier stages in their career, um, you know, versus um, someone who perhaps is going through different challenges because at the stage of career they're at. And that could just be, you know, a complete rethink of where they're at with their career, a completely different experience, even though they come, um, you know, with, with a, a rock steady career behind them. So no, absolutely no limitation in terms of stages of career. Um, so um, Amica, just going to you, it would be lovely if you could just talk to the, um, to the group just a little bit more about your own experiences um, of being a mentee. Okay, hi everyone, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm part of the, I was part of the 2021 RISE Mentee Programme and um, as Anna, Anna mentioned earlier on, I was the, I was her mentor and um, the reason that I went on the mentoring programme is the fact that I think they've always sought out mentors like um, naturally or because I think I also come from a family background where um, different people in different stages of their career have always had people who have been sort of like sponsors to them or for them in the organizations that they've worked with. And um, my husband, when he started working, I think one of the organizations he worked for actually um, did this body type system where you would have someone in the different part of the business as a mentor to sort of like guide you. So I've kind of always been surrounded by people who have had mentors. And in my previous role, where I was working, I did actually start my career as a graduate engineer. And within that process, I was also assigned a mentor. So for me, I've always had people that I looked up to in my career, people that always, um, I think I could always go to, to help me in areas that I felt like I needed help, people who I could talk to outside of my business unit. So that 
background always allowed for me to always be aware and be in search of a mentor. So how did I find out about Rise? It's through my one of my networking events or one of my networks from my previous organization. She'd worked in BT for quite a while and she was quite aware that I had interest in joining the organization. So when she left my previous organization and we started to have a lot more honest and open conversations, she, she did say she was going to introduce me to someone at BT. And she did that introduction in March 2020, just before the lockdown. And I happened to meet a lady called Kate Winderbow. And uh, we had a conversation on the phone and it was a brief conversation, but she asked me a few questions and then she pointed out Rise and asked if I had heard about the program and I said no. And because she had put that idea in my head, I went up, looked up, went out, um, I looked up Rise and I tried to make an application that year, but I didn't put in as much effort in my application. So the way the application is, you have your standard forms on the web page and you have text box for questions. And the questions that they were, I, we were asked, I'd respond to them on the spot, you know, without much detailed thought. So I responded to all of my questions on the spot and put in my application. But I didn't get through in 2020. And I thought to myself, hmm. And I said, give that feedback back to Kate. And she said to me, the next MD you apply, this is what you should do. You should actually take the questions out, open that um, Microsoft Word, put the questions out there and fill in your application over a period of time so you can be thorough and very thoughtful in your responses and your answers. And that's exactly what I did for 2021. And at this point in time, different things had changed in my life. I was pregnant. I put in the application just because, you know, I said I was going to do next year. I actually got through and at this point when the um, response came back that my application had been successful, I had already put to birth. I was about four or five months with my baby at that point in time and I was really contemplating whether or not to still go ahead because, you know, my mind space was completely different. I wasn't thinking about work at that point in time, but I went ahead and luckily I got paired with um, Anna and I think the first one of the first things I said to her was, you know, I've just been on this journey where I've transitioned from working life to being a new mom and I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to go back to work and that if I was going to go back into the workspace, it was going to be much later on in the year 2021. So we had that as an objective and a goal. And so we started to work to, towards that. And I think that Anna really helped me on understanding, you know, what it was that I wanted to, to, to do in my career because I was leaving an industry that I knew well, which is the telco industry. And I was trying to break into media and broadcast per se, and a specific organization, which is BT. So she really helped me when I was feeling a bit low, when, you know, I'm putting in applications and not getting results, or I'm trying to apply for just anything that's out there. And she'd ask me questions like, why are you applying for this role? You know, do you think it really matches your skill set? You're trying to be customer facing while well, you're going for this type of roles. So she really was a sounding board at that point in time. And it really allowed me to recollect myself and put in applications for things that I really felt I was ready to do. And um, just towards the end of the RISE program, I did get off an offer and I started work again January um, 4th for BT. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way RISE, um, the mentoring program was, it was amazing. Um, I, I got to interact with not just my mentor, but other mentors as well. And I think that that's one of the best part of the networking um, pro, the, the, the RISE program, that you get to meet people and build such a strong network that I feel you, you have for, for life, really. So, yeah, quite happy to have been part of Rise. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Amica. And just picking up on something you said as well, um, I think that that's one of the things about the programme that's very important. And it talks a little bit to what Dushi said earlier, that, you know, joining a mentoring programme doesn't remotely suggest um, that, you know, that, that people don't have very strong role models or even mentors within their own business. Um, mm -hmm. But there's actually something about a little bit about that separation. And I do think that the role of mentoring as well within a, a safe place and within a trusted relationship is providing a certain level of challenge as well and about query and getting that yeah. balance between support and giving someone confidence, but also having the type of trusting relationship as well that as you get to know somebody, you can raise certain questions of challenge. Um, I think is an important part of, of that relationship as well. Um, thanks for that, Amica. Um, and well, Liz, it would be lovely to hear. So you were a mentee on the, the very first North American program last year. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. And I'm sorry, preschool germs. So I'm a little stuffy today. 
Um, yeah, so for me, Rise came, I was just coming back from maternity leave, actually, with my second born. So I was pregnant during all of 2020, kind of coming back in 2021 to this new virtual world. And um, I think in my application, right, Amika, you kind of mentioned this too, I was vulnerable. I was completely like, I don't know what I'm doing as a manager anymore. I don't know how to lead my team remotely, let alone be a mom while I'm in my kitchen doing all of this now, right? There wasn't that physical separation from my professional career and my motherhood duties anymore. And, and I was struggling with that. And um, I think with Rise and the cohort and the mentorship program, you know, having other women be like, hey, I feel imposter syndrome too. And maybe their story was a little bit different than mine, but you also find commonalities, right? Um, like in my cohort, listening to other moms who have teenagers, I was like, look, they're still very successful in their career. They're still feeling fulfilled. And like Colin said, they didn't mess it up, right? Their kids are now teenagers learning how to drive, not little humans that are, you know, photobombing my Zoom calls anymore. Um, so for me, having that support to see other women at different stages in their career, but all very driven and motivated, um, because being in Rise, right, it's, it's literally showing you a group of people who are investing in themselves, whether it's an hour a week, an hour a month, whatever that meeting is that you can dedicate. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in that, right, by, by sitting in a Zoom room with other women that you can literally kind of know their motivations are to do better by themselves if that's um you know career paths and or or just you know within their teams what their own goals are you know if you want to better your communication skills um if you want to figure out your personal branding the idea of networking right it's like this very intimidating word where people are like I don't know how to network and really it's just this it's conversations with people going okay, who, who is Colin McMillan? Who is Abigail? What is her story? Let me go find her and talk to her. Um, and there's usually some common ground, right? It could be, hey, I like dogs. And now you have that conversation and that connection. And it's not necessarily, what are you going to do for me in my career, right? It's just making those relationships that are, are going to invest in yourself down the line. Um, and so I think in, you know, in the lifespan of the program, you know, me and my mentor and even my cohorts saw us all coming in with this imposter syndrome. And towards the end of it, I knew my own value very much so. Like I knew it, but having some kind of third party group or person justify that I deserve, you know, where I'm at in my life right now, um, that I deserve a seat at the table, that my ideas and input and thoughts you know, aren't wrong or that I shouldn't brush them off by saying, you know, LOL at the end of an email or, Hey, I'm sorry. Or let me phrase it a little bit nicer being like, no, you, this is well thought out. You put this together, present it this way. Um, those were all really great things, you know, and, and with that, I now have those resources, whether it's Colin to say, Hey, I, I updated my resume. Can you go through and like a middle school teacher again, just mark it out in red and tell me what I need to do on the formatting or, you know, the women in my cohort to say, Hey, I have a job posting. I trust your recommendations. Who do you have? You know? And, and with that, I've hired people for my team from cohort recommendations as well. And it's worked out really great. Um, you know, likewise, we tried to start like a book club recommendation too. I don't know how well that's going. But we're trying. Um, and I, I think the, the confidence that I came out with after Rise from having those sessions once a month to talk about personal branding or public speaking skills, how to network on LinkedIn. And then with Colin and I kind of going into the, the nuances each week about the hardships I was feeling at work or in my personal life. Um, it's, it's just, it's tremendous. And I don't think, you know, anyone could, could put a value to that because it was so incredible for me. I mean, just, just listening to the three of you is really extraordinary because I think as well, it just reminds me um, of the scope of what you were all able to achieve out of the program in the sense that, you know, that breadth and, and I absolutely get Colin's point, you know, that he, he mentioned right at the beginning that, you know, <laughs> 
he's not a trained counsellor and wasn't putting himself out there as a capacity in that capacity. And I will certainly, you know, say that as a mentor going in last year, there was an element of, you know, where do those sort of boundaries sit and are the boundaries and how do you manage that if it comes up? But I think the reality listening to you all talk is that ultimately there is never a complete separation between your personal life and, and your career listening to the three of you and what you were going through on maternity leave, returning from maternity leave, toddlers is just extraordinary um, in terms of you all going through that and the timing of when you did the programme. But, you know, all three of you have articulated a real spectrum of what you were doing with your mentors, that it was a real combination of, you know, work-life balance and the challenges that that naturally presented, um, very specific things perhaps that came out of work day to day. And I know it was like that with my mentor. I mean, again, I think Colin mentioned from a mentor perspective, we have to be really flexible and, you know, we can map out with a mentee, um, you know, some great goals um, of what you'd like to achieve out of the program, but perhaps as an element of, you know, I don't know, we've got a session arranged and you've just had a really bad day. <laughs> And it could be that just something specific has happened that day that just came at you out of nowhere, in which case, you know, long term goals be damned. It could be that the most valuable thing in that session is actually just giving you that time and space to work through what happened at work today and maybe some immediate things that you need in, in terms of that support. Um, uh, Bethan, just in terms of, you know, Liz was was talking very eloquently about the sort of you know, the bonding in the North America pro program, which bearing in mind how, you know, disparately you're all located is, is incredible. You know, how did you find that within your cohort, Beth, in terms of that sort of breadth of, of women that participated? Um, what, with, with it being virtual, you mean, or, yeah. Well, and also just generally anyway, about how you sort of found, you know, did you find that it sort of gave you that kind of instant network of... Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think as well, because it was virtual, we 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 set up a WhatsApp group very, very quickly because we knew we weren't going to be able to meet and, you know, do those networking events that is part of the normal RISE program uh, in terms of the mentoring. So we we kind of took that and we we made the best of it. Um, and I think because it was online and everyone was going through such a weird time in their lives, it was almost just that nice security comfort blanket and it's almost like you've got your own little private net um, LinkedIn network almost and like you say for jobs or for support or I've got this situation has anyone done this or you know those experience so you you really do have so, something so unique at the end of it and during it um, and uh, there were times when I think you know there's I think, um, Liz, you mentioned it. It can be quite lonely sometimes. You can feel quite lonely um, in terms of, am I the only one going through this? And is it just me that's feeling like this? And, you know, especially when you go off and have babies, it can just do crazy things to your confidence and your mind and your energy levels. And you need people to remind you that it is completely normal and get you back to where you were and, and even better. And, you know, every single one of those people on that course and your cohort and your, your network is there. It's like having so many cheerleaders. Like, who, who would not want that? Oh, that's a lovely expression for it, Beth, and I really like that. Mm. <laughs> and Amica, you, you know, you talked um, about how you were at a sort of a certain stage in your career in terms of looking to do something different. I mean, yeah. do you think that your career would be in the same place now if you hadn't been part of that mentoring scheme uh no i definitely think not me because i might not have had the motivation to do what i wanted to do i might have given up and just thought you know what i'm not going back to work and um i could have just taken a different thousand different turns so i think that uh rise definitely helped me to keep my mind sharp and focused and just made me think that you know I was having conversations that were engaging that were stimulating my mind and um, I got back into an attitude of where I can actually do this and so that momentum just came back and I just sailed through so it definitely I don't think I'd be here where I'm at now career-wise without that really. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, and Stephen, I know that you've participated as a, as a mentor, um, you know, with, with RISE previously. Um, 
what would you say to people if if there's anyone on this call that sort of still you know a little bit on the fence about whether to apply or not i mean what what would you be your sort of words of encouragement to people thinking about participating i i would say what i actually said to my team today i emailed all the uh, ladies in my company and said this is happening the closing date is the third of april the, the there's nothing not to like about rise i've been i've had two mentees and i've met a lot more of the mentees um at the networking events and it's it's almost too good to be true when you you hear about it because if it was a a commercial organization you'd pay thousands of pounds probably for coaching and mentoring and going to the sort of events that rise puts up um and i'd echo what everyone said it's it's a group and the cohorts you it's like being at school you'll grow up together and uh, in the 2021 cohort, for instance, somebody might be a CTO in five years time in a broadcaster, and one of the other cohorts might be a CTO in, um, I don't know, a production company. And then you come to a difficult moment and trying to get access to those people in a normal environment will be really difficult, but you're, you're, you're peers. So you can just have a grown up conversation, a CTO to CTO or whatever. So it, it's almost friends for life. Um, and there's, I don't think there's any downsides to it because it's not, it's structured in some ways, but as you've heard from other, other mentors, it's unstructured in other ways. You can set up a, a plan that we're going to talk about something. And as Abigail just said, it, something might have just happened. So you need to talk it through. Um, some of my mentees, we'd end up talking about something at work and something really sort of, if you like, really detailed. Oh, the other shift is always doing this wrong. And I can't, I can't get away of, um, getting them to do it better because they, they had no real influence. They weren't their manager. So just talking that through, um, but always bringing it back to how does it benefit the mentee? Because if somebody wants to solve that problem, then they're actually acting as a manager before they are a manager by solving a problem. And uh, you just have that conversation say, well, if you solve this problem, make sure you tell your manager what you've done. Don't often don't ask for permission. Again, like Colin says, I don't want to mess people up by getting them to do things they shouldn't. But quite a lot of the time, problems can be solved if there's confidence. So you don't have to ask for permission most of the time. So um, the mo one final thing is the most frustrating thing for me is that the, the very colleagues who would benefit from RISE, the number of times I've heard them say to me, oh, I'm not sure if I'm good enough because RISE has got such a profile now they're unsure whether to apply or it might not be good enough or oh, is it for me i would say to anybody there's no reason not to apply um it just some of the people i've met here um i've been lucky in my career i've worked in organizations um that have been uh, diverse um but i know there are others that aren't so i think yeah sorry i could go on forever about it but um i think there's no reason not to apply move a final thought move towards something you want rather than away from something you don't and if you want to do something different uh move towards it and rise would help with that it's certainly not going to stop anything so yeah absolutely you can tell i'm a bit enthusiastic so i'll stop there <laughs> stephen thank you so so much um your enthusiasm is is very very valuable and we really appreciate it um, so we've just got a few minutes left before the um, the end of the session. Um, is there anybody on the call who's thinking of applying or has any questions that we haven't been able to answer um, that you feel like you're able to put up your hand in front of the group? I am. Um, I, I'm one of them people where I can't sit in the silence and I've got to ask a question, even if I don't have a question to ask. Go, um, Mel. Go, Mel. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ad lib a question. Uh, firstly, um, I think it's brilliant, everything that everyone's spoken about. And I've got a friend who's recently um, been on the 2021 20, programme as well. Um, do, because I know the, broad, uh, the broadcast industry is so, so small, do you find that the mentors, um, as you mentioned then, Stephen, do you find that the mentors quite often um, qu have quite a lot of, um, industry relations. Uh, yeah, I can I can answer that. I'm sure other people want to. Yeah, absolutely. And it it 
just it comes with age. I think from my point of view, if you've, you've been around long enough, you get to know loads of people. So um, I met more people from Rise. But yeah, I think the contacts side of it is like with some of my mentees that they were asking about specific things. And I just happened to have worked in that very specific, similar area. So I could I could help them or I could then um, put them in touch. I could say, oh, actually, let me um, let me introduce you to Anna or in the way that Anna introduced me to Amica at some point. So it's it's a real network there. So, yeah, it's a very small industry. And, um, yeah, everyone will know somebody who can help with whatever the problem is or whatever the question is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to reiterate that, I mean, you know, the, the, the companies that sponsor um, Rise, um, you know, in terms of, you know, everybody from sort of Grass Valley to BT to Sky, the mentors themselves, you know, come from extraordinary organizations, often very, very high profile, sometimes people from more niche parts um, of, of the media industry. I mean, one of the things I'd like to say to everybody on this call as well is, you know, you, you, you from this call almost have an instant network. I couldn't be more delighted. And I know the other people who've contributed on the panel, you know, I expect when this call ends to see lots of little LinkedIn requests popping up um, with people who'd like to connect with us. Um, and that would be, you know, brilliant, you know, be bold, be confident, do those applications, put some real time and effort into them. I think Amica made a good point on that. Um, you know, it, it is really sad that we won't be able to take everyone on the program and the thought of selecting just makes me feel slightly sick inside. But, you know, <laughs> be, be clear about what you want to achieve. Think about those outcomes. Think about how the program can benefit you. You know, be clear, be thoughtful about that. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm so excited and I, I really hope that people who participated in this call and um, if you've got any more questions, it's absolutely fine um, to get in touch directly. If you go to the risewib.com website, it's got all of our contacts on it. Um, I'm at Abigail at risewib.com. So I can always put you in touch with some of the other regions um, if needed. Obviously, Linnea was on this call. <clears throat> in terms of the other territories so anything that you feel that we didn't answer um, in this session or you'd feel more comfortable just discussing in a one-to-one -one, please please do get in touch and um, thank you so much for the people who agreed to join as previous mentors and mentees really appreciate your time um, and thank you to all of you for joining I'm so excited about your interest um, please do get in touch and I can't wait to see your applications Thanks, Have Abigail. a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Very much. Bye. Bye, Thank everyone. you. Bye. 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 Bye.